crashing with his garage. Ha! Hello, Hello Rhonda. Rhonda's. Hey, Rhonda's. It is uh, St. Patrick's Day here in Willie's Garage. So happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we're back. We were on hiatus last week because Alf was preempted by a, a show that doesn't have a YouTube series about it. What was Not it? Not yet. Was Rags it? to Riches. Rags to Riches. So I would invite any uh, Rondas out there, if you want to do a, you, you'll, it'll be a lot shorter because there were only like 24 episodes of that, right? Yeah. 20. Um, 20. And, uh, so I'll do that, and then whoever oh, okay. wanted to do that can take my place on this show. <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. The uh, This is the ALF Rewatch show. The goal is to get ALF or ALF's creator, Paul Fusco, on the show. If anyone has any connections in that world of puppetry, of comedy in Hollywood, please, we would love to get ALF on the show. We only have six episodes left in season one, George. It's You're going to miss it. <laughs> you're, you're gonna miss it this is uh stockholm syndrome you're you're gonna start sympathizing with your captor at a certain ah! mm -hmm. well that's a good high-pitched elf thank you so the uh this episode of elf that we're going to cover that aired on march 16th the day before saint patrick's day in 1987 did not cover saint patrick's day at all so i was looking were there any connections to saint pat's and an elf. Did he ever, in in a future episode, wear a leprechaun hat? No, no, no reference. But you may recall that in previous episodes we've shown what elf was like dubbed in German. Kind of had this high pitched gravelly voice. The and that that elf voice was obvious. Might have even been more popular than the one in America, based on how huge elf was in Germany. The Spanish elf. I don't think we've played in the show, but also kind of funny gra gravelly voice i believe we've played the greek elf too bob hedges one of our viewers sent us a greek elf vhs and i was like did they do a version in ireland ireland you know they mostly speak english there but i was wondering did they do it yes they did do an irish um elf episode this is what the irish elf sounded like take a take a listen let me tell you a tale about a wee lad who stole me lucky charms a lad named Gordio Shumway. Tis you? Aye, tis someone I met by the Blarney Stone. He stole me green clovers, blue diamonds, yellow moons, red balloons, even purple horseshoes. Hee hee ha ha! Aye, tis you, wasn't it? Aye, it was. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it aired in, in Ireland, which surprised me that they would just do an Irish accent, but... Um, and even some of the content, I think, was... Yeah, they, they definitely rewrote it, because I don't remember any of that. Yeah, they rewrote it. So, I don't know. I almost wish that I had grown up watching Elf in Ireland. Um, well, I hope I hope in future episodes you'll show... You know, they also did different versions for... Different regional versions for the United States. So, there was, like, the Southern Elf. Mm -hmm. There's Chicago Elf. Uh, Boston We've, Elf. Yeah, I was able to get my hands on all of those, George. So, we oh. will be seeing more of those exclusively here on Willie's Garage. You're just but grabbing first, viewers and holding uh, them. I know. But first, we have a, a psychological probing episode of ALF to do in a, uh, a Mel Mac recap. Mel Mac recap. Mel Mac recap. Mel Mac. Well, take a, a seat on our, our Chase Lounge here and... Um, and tell us your dreams about Elf because we're doing a, a, an episode recapping "Going Out of My Head Over You," which aired March sixteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. This may be Elf that is most irritating at the beginning here, George. It, I certainly found it, that to be true. <laughs> They're really turning it up. I think I, I pulled a clip of Elf being irritating. Let's let's take a look at that. And this is the non-Irish uh, broadcast version. Hey Willie, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a squirting flower. Am I working it right? Uh, I think you got the basic idea. <laughs> Where'd you get that? What is Brian's? Sh I didn't even point out Brian's shirt here, but this one is just a terrible. It's I'm yellow here, they, they, and then the blue sleeves. I can't believe they didn't fix it for syndication. <laughs> like reshoots had, could a, not have been comfortable either. A thirty-year-old Benji Gregory. <laughs> Benji, we need you back. I sent away for a whole box of this stuff. 
that Taiwan must be the most fun place on earth. Good job. Oh, Alf, uh, you better go to the kitchen. But I didn't show you the fake vomit. Save that for dinner. Of course. Where's my mind? He's got the gags. Alf's got the gags. He had uh, uh, some gags in, in the episode that we did two weeks ago. He had all the Adams novelties that you could find at, at the, your local dime store uh, back in the 80s. Now, you, as, as at that age, did Alf represent, like, your id? Like, what you really, how you wanted to be in your family, but, like, you know, you, you, had, you had some uh, restraint. He doesn't have restraint. I had no restraint either, George, and I, I, that is the problem. I had no limiter, so I bought all those gags. I would trick my mother with them. Um, I would plan elaborate April Fool's Day pranks, and I believe I was spurred on. I believe that in rewatching this, I really think Alf was an influence. I mean, no, I, I th really th do. That makes me think that you, in your, and I've said this before, but that VCR Party and Found Footage Festival co-host Joe Pickett is sort of the Alf that makes you the willy uh, because he he has even less restraint. I mean, he's... Yes, I found restraint into my adulthood in terms of, of prankings and just, just general behaviors uh, in general. And uh, I mean, I have dietary restrictions. Um, now, Joe eats anything he wants, drinks anything he wants. So yeah, he is um, the, the loudish, obnoxious oaf uh, to my... Um, restrained voice of reason. You're right. The tables have turned. They, although Joe is always like that. I, he was never Willie-esque in his teenage years. Hmm. In fact, he had less of a limiter than I did. He got in like, basically would have been arrested trouble when he was a, a teen. Or, oh, I I, I save it for VCR party. Yeah, I know. We really Sorry. should comment I on it. Mean to derail it. Well, uh, so Alf is getting to him and in, in bed with Kate, uh, Willie says, you know, what should I do? Um, and Kate says, you should go see Larry, the psychotherapist, his old friend, I guess he knows. And this is uh, played by a guy named Bill Daly, who I recognized uh, instantly. And uh, so Willie goes in, sees uh, Larry, the psychiatrist, and shows him a picture of Alf to show that he's real and he isn't making this up. And uh, Larry is shocked and decides to come over. He thinks it'd be better to observe the problems in the home, how they communicate. And uh, of course, any psychiatrist scene, if they're not using puppets to show you, you know, they're reversing roles. And uh, that's the, uh, the game of the scene here. Okay, since, uh, since we're at the dinner table, let's just act like we would at the dinner. Did you recognize Larry, George? Uh, I did not. But okay. I did recognize his patient. Yes. Let's and I'm, talk going about... to have, I'm going to have some pictures of him. Oh, okay, good. I've got pictures of, of uh, Larry here. Afterwards. And we can start off by you, Willie, being out. Food, food, give me more food. Uh, I haven't had a meal in, oh, half an hour. Ah! I like that they give Max Wright something to do here besides be uh, a buttoned up uh, tightwad. I thought he did a great job with I that impersonation. <laughs> oh, no, Alf, no, no. No food for you. You already ate last month. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't sound like that. No, come on, Willie, you're doing I fine. I don't. Come on, keep going. All right. <laughs> I finished my meal. Uh, I guess I'll watch TV while everybody else does the dishes. I think we watch enough TV in this house. Joe? We should do something more stimulating. I know. Let's conjugate verbs. <laughs> Let me just say something quickly here. So we did our TV's Plunkets and Practical Thumbs um, special, which I recommend everybody watch, where we show off unflattering photos. We did it in the style of another 80s show called TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes. And the premise was we were going to pipe in a laugh track. So I spent the better part of a week adding fake canned laughs to uh, the episode. And what I realized is that we didn't pause nearly enough for the laughs. So. Now that I think, I mean, they didn't shoot Elf in front of a live audience. It must have really been tough to figure out how long of a pause to leave for the laughs. I would love to see the ep It would have been so, the surreal versions are the ones without the laughter. Yes. Well, they, yeah. they, I bet they're like really tense. And like, and if, if people don't tell you where to laugh, then yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so no. I, maybe there is a version somebody done or that we could do without the laugh track, um, because it is it's a strange thing to to wait for laughs when you don't know how long you should wait. Did they say just count to two after this because it's a big laugh, or it must have been very weird on the set there uh, for several reasons. Yeah, for a lot of reasons. Burps. <laughs> no, how about how about we just break things? <laughs> Oh, no, no, that would be wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> All right, then, how about if we, um, how about if we eat the cat, then? How you doing, Lucky? <laughs> Sorry, household rule number 856, subsection D, paragraph two. We do not eat the cat. A rule smooths. I hate rules. I like, I like anarchy. <laughs> well, I don't okay, somebody. I know Joe Blevins watches this show occasionally. I know he's remixed some stuff. I like anarchy. I mean, could well, this be mixed with like anarchy in the UK? I mean, I just feel like taking that line. You could even make a video for it. Let me just do that clean again. The cat. A rule smooths. I hate rules. I like. I like anarchy. Well, I don't believe in anarchy. It's much too spontaneous. Oh, look. Look how late it's getting. And I still have to lay out my clothes for the rest of the year. It's pretty good. So let's talk about Larry, the psychiatrist. The, the full character name, by the way, in the credits is uh, Dr. Lawrence Larry Dykstra. And I'm wondering, because the, the New York Mets in 1986 won... Uh, the the pennant they were they won the World Series um, with Larry or with a uh, Lenny Dykstra, so Larry Dykstra Lenny Dykstra, they won in '86. I believe there was a person whose last name was Dykstra who worked at uh, Industrial Light and Magic oh. around that time also. So you mm -hmm. know I don't know that. If, I don't know. It's true. They, they could have been involved in the special effects for ALF, too. But yeah, it just seemed weird because it was around the time where Lenny Dykstra was a huge player. Nails for the Mets, of course, cocaine fueled. And we all know there are some drugs involved on, on the making of ALF as well with Jerry Stahl and who knows what else was going on. But it was the 80s in, in Hollywood. Uh, and let's talk about, though, uh, the actor who played Larry Dykstra. It, uh, it's Bill Daly. And Bill Daly, I recognized immediately as Major Healy from I Dream of Genie. This was a show I watched on Nick at Night uh, a lot because I had a crush on Barbara Eden as Genie. I really did. And uh, he was not the lead, but he was like, he knew about Genie in a way that he knew about Elf. He wasn't the main person who knew about this, but, you know. He was typecast as the person who knew about the thing. The, the secret, yes. And he was also then on the Bob Newhart show. Um, Bob Newhart was a psychiatrist in that show. He played the neighbor. And uh, famously in that show, the the uh, one of Bob's patients was a guy, I forget the character's name, but it was played by a guy who played Larry's patient in this episode of Elf, Jack Riley. Yes, I have a... a a picture of him on from the from the uh, New oh, yes. the Bob Newhart show, and he it, um the minute I saw him, I thought Night Court. He was um he was on Night Court as many different characters. In fact, oh. he, Jack Riley ha was an actor. He has 180 um, credits on IMDb, um, and most of those are shows where he had multiple appearances or was like a main character. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so he had a huge career. He died in 2016. Uh, so I can't get him on this show. Uh, I recognize. Oh, by the way. Yes. Um, we also, uh, Bill, ba uh, Bill Daly uh, passed away in 2018, but uh, like these guys just were career character actors, such a great career. I know like Bill Daly was a comedian. He worked like on, all these shows was a radio DJ and just, you know, had all these iconic roles and it was working like well into his like 60s, 70s even. So, uh, yeah, it's worth watching just for to see these classic character actors in, in later roles. The thing I want to get to. So basically, Larry suggests that Elf move out and he could stay with him. And but that's a ploy to get Willie to admit to communicate to Elf that, no, he doesn't want him to move out. He cares about Elf. 
Alf says he cares about Willie. They're communicating. They resolve to communicate better. And that's kind of how it ends. But then there's, you know, they go to commercial and then there's one of the weirdest endings I think we've seen to date. Did you stick around for the ending, George? I did. It was, uh, I I kept waiting for a gag and no gag occurred. And so the gag was on the viewer. And it's very strange because it starts off like it should be a gag. It's Alf staring at a sleeping Willie in bed. Like that's comedy waiting to happen, but they don't go for it. Maybe it's profound. Take a look. Oh, hi, Alf. Hi, Willie. Night, Alf. Night, Willie. That's it. You did not at that. That's exactly how it ends. And it had that sound effect, the ah, the Aww. one person. There's one person <laughs> in the audience. I feel, I think the story is that the, um, that canned laughter was a, um, on a machine that was run by, uh, there, there was like a guy who started his own company and it was like a secret machine that had recordings in it, um, uh, he'd built this machine with the audio reels and like had buttons that had very, very specific things he had recorded. And I feel like that's the sort of thing you would hear from the uh, very early or very late, like night court episodes where they would get serious at the end or, or like yes. uh, sincere and, and which read as completely insincere. Well, and, first uh, I want that machine, wherever okay. it is. I want that machine. It's in Smithsonian, yeah, I think. That would have had to been an awe into a chuckle and yeah, you know, I found a uh, a CD or like a file that has like a hundred different kinds of canned laughter that I used for our our uh, TV's plunkets and practical thumbs up uh, special, and but that wasn't enough. There were times where I was, no, I just need a short burst here, and they didn't have it. So wherever that machine is, let's resurrect it, and uh, let's do a weird uh, ending to this episode where we say goodnight to each other and virtually Aww. tuck each other in yeah and you guys yeah. can awe at home and and one person can chuckle but first alf crap i i lied when i said there was no uh alf stuff that referenced saint patrick's day because there was one thing although this was just a photo it was never in an episode this was part of the top series of trading cards. And here you see who needs a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I've got a refrigerator um, with uh, Alf wearing a full on leprechaun outfit with uh, a beer, it looks like. And you're saying this does not appear in an episode? I can't no. believe the effort that must have gone into that. They must Putting have had Michu in into this that, outfit. Yeah. Throwing that on him. Oh. Yeah. Just not an episode, trading card. just a photo, yeah. And here's another one they, they made with the same outfit. Hmm. This one doesn't really reference the fact that he's dressed as a leprechaun at all. It just said, who's the wise guy who made off with my Persian on rye? Um, poor, poor Michu, who thought like, well, at least they're not dressing me up like a leprechaun in this show. <laughs> and then, yeah, I know. Poor little Michu. God rest his soul. But uh, so uh, that's as close as I could get to an elf. St. Patrick's Day thing was the tops trading cards. That's pretty close. Yeah. Well, this is probably one of the coolest pieces of Alf crap that exists. Oh boy. Okay. And this I got from a website I think we've mentioned previously, alftv.com, which is a fan mm-hmm. site. Um, and Good I saw, resource. I saw a photo uh, of this, and then I dug a little deeper. This was the Alf Warner Brothers press kit. Um, oh my God! It's incredible. So you've got uh, wow. this, the, the spaceship. You've got the Alf plush in there. The steering wheel appears to have a Warner Brothers symbol on it. A little binder um, uh, of the synopses. of the episode synopses, um, and then several files. And we're going to go through these. Um, Does it come with the bedspread? If you were to pick this up, um, a lovely bedspread. No, I think you have the superior bedspread. Okay. Thank you. So the Alf synopses they have for uh, seasons one wow. through four. So that are, look how many what's ep- to come? Look what's to come. We go yes. season one anyway. We have six more episodes. So oh, okay. But Cucaracha is a great season finale. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got um, very specific descriptions of the episodes, which I guess um, 
I'm wondering whether these were sent out for um, for like syndication um, so that, you know, they could run capsules in the local papers. But then mm. they've got descriptions. Poor Max Wright. Who, I didn't um, know he was – Willie was – oh, okay, I see. Max Wright is a native of Detroit. I was thinking they were saying that about Willie. Right. Uh, and it has everything in here that, um, that you know, he, he expected to be a pre-med major. <laughs> um, his life took a turn with Alf. Um, but Tony that, Award, Pulitzer Prize winning play. Yep. Uh, so um, – Let's see. So this this kind of dates. It says Paul Fusco in his description that he's working on a, an NBC Christmas special for 1990, a Christmas retail starring Ed O'Neill. I'm unfamiliar. And Christopher Hewitt, who mm. was, of course, Mr. Who, Belvedere. Who famously sat on his balls and they had to stop taping during the episode. <laughs> Love that story. Hollywood legend. Now, what's really interesting is in these Ooh. folders, they have things like... Um, uh, Logo they, sheets? Yeah. Yes. Uh, these, these are, you know, these are the pictures you'd see for um, merchandisers. A huge set of these, these logos that oh, would. Uh, you'd copy it before you could, the computers were readily available. You'd actually cut these out and paste them into your ads and things. Yeah. And then you've got your, uh, I think this is uh, <gasps> billboard art. As Alf would say, producing an Alf billboard is no problem. Um, so they have transparencies in here for things like this. See more of me now five days a week. Oh, see, that's the same art that I have on my um, windshield screen in my car. Yes. It's that same one. So, yeah, so that's just some of the Whoa. amazing things. We're, that... no, we're... Okay, so that wasn't for sale. That was just put there for historical purposes. Yeah, I I feel like I found those photos of it by accident. Like I, I don't think they were linked directly off of the site because I had several times gone to that site in the early days of Alfcrap, and there was one photo of the of the whole set. But some Google image craziness led me to those individual photos. Stunning! That is my favorite piece of Alfcrap so far. Um, you like I, the spaceship and plush though. Yeah. Easily, but also just like I think that must have been like a kit for syndication because if they had all four episode synopses on there, it was done. And this must have been like, you know how like there's still a billboard for Seinfeld reruns up on the Long Island Expressway. Sure, you put an Elf billboard up, like airing you know every weekday at five on you know the local NBC station, maybe. Right, and when once this show Willie's Garage gets picked up, they're going to have a still of us looking at the billboard and we'll we'll be on the beach like that too and you can insert the local information there oh. yeah we just need 100 episodes to get into syndication i think that's how it works on youtube right take it out we'll of this hellhole. well i found some um some elf uh handmade dolls they're always foreign um on etsy and uh some are better than others let's take a look <laughs> okay this one is I, haunting, almost haunting. Um, glass eyes, oil pants. I don't know what that means. Oil <laughs> is that uh, is that an artificial oil firm? paints? Spell, spell, misspelled? Yeah, maybe. I, I think so because I think if you look at the snout, it's sort of oil painted fabric. Maybe. No, those are oil pants. Yeah, I can tell. Oil pants. Yep, you're right. Um, oil well, pants. That, that looks an awful lot like there's an orangutan. Uh, yeah, flush that they may have just torn the head off and this <laughs> on, and it just posed sort of in the snow as if it's like contemplating suicide or something. It's very, yeah, it's it's a it's a haunting framing for this, but I do love it. It's it's artistic. It's not just a faithful recreation of what Elf looked like. It, there's some uh, there's an artistic rendering here that I enjoy, and this one, ah, uh, this is custom Big Elf. This is. Uh, Hmm. Only one left, 120 centimeters with a wire carcass <laughs> carcass to stand by his own. Custom <laughs> listing for client. Look how huge that is. That's a normal like chair, a recliner. I got to say, I want this one. That's the thing I'm going to find myself in <laughs> on the last episode of Willie's Garage. You will, you'll be stuffed and mounted like that in my chair. But uh, the next time I come across $950, it's going right here. Uh, yeah, and I saw the other one ships free. That, that is a good deal. So 115 for that? That's not yeah. bad. So I'm going to show uh, two Alf cakes of. Um, I love the cakes. Yeah. So this one, 
each time I show an Alf cake, I think this may be the best one I've shown yet. This is amazing. This is wow. It's this is it's a like wedding vertical. cake. Is it? This is quote uh, for uh, "Love Me Some Cake" six one five at Cake Central. Mm -hmm. Wrote uh, the caption was "Alf cake for a groom who loves Alf." White cake with chocolate filling. TFL exclamation point, which I think means something in the cake world. I haven't been able to figure out, uh. <laughs> but um, but that is pretty incredible, and I feel like that's the sort of thing that would uh, encourage somebody who's a big Alf fan to get married. You know how some guys uh, stereotypically drag their heels. Yeah. Getting right. married. Well, uh, if he's an Alf fan, the hmm. way to a man's heart is through his Alf cake. Is that? Is that? Uh, right? I would agree with that message. Yeah. And then compare that with this one. This is uh, hmm. uh, for Phil's thirtieth <laughs> birthday. Um, oh, Phil! Uh, this is um, also vertical orient oriented, which is difficult. Added layer of difficulty. Yeah, I feel like they were, they're like they should be in the same wing of this of the Alpha Museum. <laughs> these two, uh, but this the quote on this one was one of my favorite designs to work on. The body is sculpted sponge with RKT head and snout to make the entire cake edible. RKT <laughs> I learned was. Rice Krispie treats. Oh yes, because those are stiffer. They provide a foundation. Yeah, so those are some. Those are a pair of Alf cakes. Wow, those are great. Uh, I have made the Alf cake using the the pan, and uh, and had to actually buy a bunch of of icing and supplies to to make this. But I was happy with it with how it turned out. But it, Worth it's every hard. Penny. It's hard to make, especially without RKTs uh, mm. at the at the ready. Uh, what's my last thing? Oh, here it is. It's my Holy Grail Alf dolls. Now, this is a more realistic rendering. It is what they call an Alf prop. Alf Gordon Shubway life-size prop, one-to-one. -one. He comes with a Hawaiian shirt. This is made in Argentina. I've seen these on occasion. They don't show up too often, but the $350 price tag is always, I mean, given this is less than the $950 huge Alf. But it's always just out of the price range. I mean, I'm living below the poverty level, well, so almost everything is below the price range for me. But... It does say make offer. Hmm. So Maybe in the that... comments, look at uh, the by shipping, the way, though. Yeah. <laughs> look at that shipping. Ooh boy. So it's five hundred uh, bucks basically. Yeah. So in the comments, suggest what offer Nick should make, and then uh, <laughs> go to the Patreon link and make that how, happen. Yeah. How about zero dollars plus mm. one, and I'll pay the one forty for shipping. That I could maybe manage. But it says uh, nine of them have been sold, though. I know. I so my goal is maybe by the end, in four years, when this is all over, maybe five if we do the animated series, that I will be in a financial situation to get this. And I mean, I have a life-size ET prop that I found at a uh, an antique store. And where is that I, now? I, it's uh, in my living room. I actually <laughs> drove back to Wisconsin one Christmas with it, just to use to the use, HOV lane. Yeah, to use the HOV lane and uh, and to have have it posed with with uh, my niece and nephew. So I just feel like Alf should be my co-pilot, um, and that is that is my goal is to get the realistic Alf Gordon Shumway at some point before I die. Well, I have one ALF tattoo to show, and right. you can't show it without hearing the song. If you got a case of the Wednesday blues, just check out these ALF tattoos, yeah. Okay, up until this very moment, I had no idea what this tattoo was supposed to represent, and right now I think I get it. Really? Just as I'm about clicked? to show it. Um, so I, I just thought, like, ALF spider? That's terrible. But now yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just a face hugger, right, from... Alien? Oh, perhaps. So, I was thinking a uh, 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 Ralphnophobia, mm. but no. Yeah, you're right. It might be the facehugger alien from uh, from Alien. Yeah, Either, but up till yeah. I was going to say this is the one that makes the least sense. But now it actually kind of makes sense. But it really it looks more like a spider because it doesn't have those like segmented legs like the like the rubbery bony legs that the face hugger has well i'll say this i'm glad hr giger isn't here to <laughs> to uh to see his work turned yeah. into this yeah it's an insult so don't get that tattoo to get a realistic elf face hugger let's talk about next week uh on willie's garage there are only six episodes left of season one it's just flown by uh, right george it's uh yeah i yes next week next week this is a kind of a, a high concept 
elf. And I, and I like that in season one, now given there's like 30 episodes to a season in the eighties, but like they're, they're already getting high concept. This is a, a elf's take on rear window. And the writers got to have some fun with this. And of course, who do you think that Alpha is spying on? It's got to be Trevor. It's the Akmonics. You're right. So we get to learn more about uh, Trevor Akmonic and Mrs. Akmonic's private life, which uh, I think you'll all enjoy next week on Willie's Garage. But uh, until next time, bite wind. Bite wind. Crashing Willie's Garage. Ha! And good night, Nick. Am I looking the right way? Oh. Good night, George.